Gamers hungering for a stellar showcase of games they are soon to receive may be very disappointed as the showcases this far of next gen's offerings have fell way short of those expectations. How has this come about? And why is this the exact argument that E3 is a must? Let's get into it. What's up, people? What's up, people? What's up, people? It's your boy, MM2K, back again with another video. Do me a huge favor before we get into this one. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Rock those bells for notifications, please, so you know when your boy's dropping these episodes of the medicine. Because I'm back! <laughs> I appreciate all of y'all straight up. Because y'all know the deal, y'all know the reason, and y'all know the slogan. I am not too proud to ask. Let's get into it with no further ado. All right. So... Um, we know the history of E3, or we should know, just in case you don't. E3 is the annual um, game expo that's considered the mecca of gaming. Every year, uh, game publishers and developers and gamers alike come to the um, LA Convention Center. They flood it with all the nerdy gamers sweating all that stuff just to see what's going to be coming in the future of game and game development. For that year going and on you know what i'm saying it's particularly big at the launch of next gen consoles which this is the time that we're at now at the time of this recording now the last few years e3 has been experiencing somewhat of a mass exodus as publishers have either uh pulled away from doing shows on e3 grounds you know and they just do it on a periphery where e3 is at or they just pulled out of the show altogether. And the biggest blow to the showcase was Sony pulling out, right? So you fast forward to now, E3 having problems, E3 having issues because of this exodus. Uh, and this exodus came about because there were just too many publishers and developers not liking the format that it was being converted to, more gamers coming on the grounds, it becoming more difficult for them to showcase their stuff to the to journalists and 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 stuff like that and and just the fact that it costs you a lot of money to do E3 it it it, it averages out especially to the big publishers that want to do a showcase and have like booths they say it's like eight million dollars um you know what I mean um each each E3 showing for each individual um, um participant if they are. A big you know publication that's gonna have booths and a showcase and all that stuff right so again fast forward to now people have left e3 was in trouble already right because sony the big dog this generation said that they're not coming um now you have covid and covid has been even a bigger blow because you, you, you just can't do the showcase without it so then people said okay this is going to be the final nail in the coffin for e3 because you can't do the show so now everybody's forced to go and do their own thing and if the what if everybody if what everybody attempts is successful it's going to destroy e3 e3 will be no more and everybody was just in a belief that you don't need e3 e3 will be no more covid is going to show you how people respond to covid these showcases are going to be great and from all indications that we've seen so far, uh -uh, we had, we've had two major showcases, one from Xbox, and one being hosted by the Summer Games Fest, which is supposed to be a replacement of E3, done in a different format, um, that have fell short. That have fell short in grasping the, the, the mind share of the general gaming public. I'm not talking about the fanboys on the periphery, I'm talking about the general gaming public. Let me explain how. First and foremost, let's tackle uh, what was done by Xbox. So what Xbox answer was to there being no E3 is that they were gonna do these shows called Xbox 20 for 20. And they were gonna do them every month up until the release of the Xbox Series X, which is their next gen console. And that and these showcases were to highlight what you were gonna expect next gen from them. It was solely focused on next gen as far as games, features, X Cloud, all that stuff, right? And the kickoff showcase was triple A, I'm sorry, was third party games. I was getting ahead of myself. It was supposed to be a third party showcase. And the way it was pronounced, people thought they were going to see triple A 
third party offerings because Assassin's Creed Valhalla was like the main ticket being showcased here in lieu of the showcase. And come to find out by the time it dropped on the airwaves, it was mainly a, a showing of indie dad, uh, indie games. Was nothing against indie games, but these indie games just happen to be brushed up a little bit more to look better than they than indie games normally would look. And that's not a problem per se, because you know, games like Bright Memory and, and some other stuff, they look good. They look really good. The problem is, is that that's not how it was sold to the public. So this was severely overhyped, and it was so severely overhyped that Xbox on several occasions took down the video because it was getting hit with so many thumbs downs. They took down the video, put it back up. And then Aaron Greenberg had to come on and say, look, we get it. I right, we tried to avert the bad attention by pulling the okie doke and re-uploading this and saying we were doing this so you can see the 4K model. It don't take you five times to do that. Well, they didn't do it five times, but you catch my drift. It don't take you 5,000 times to do it. He said, look, man, we're going to learn from this and we're going to do better. And we hope you do. Golly. So you had that. And now you have what you see on the screen. The Summer Games Fest from Jeff Keeley. Or Jeff G. Off Keeley. What, however you pronounce this, this damn name. I'm, I'm really upset with this guy. Why am I upset? Because on the heels of all that from Xbox, he said, you know what? I'm going to do y'all one better. Y'all want to see gameplay? We're going to show you gameplay. We're going to show you what the next generation has to offer. So again, working off the anticipation and the hope that people see next generation games that are tangible in their hands, that's how he advertised what was being shown here. And what did you end up seeing from Jeff Keighley? Is you saw a tech demo. Now don't get me wrong. The tech demo looked good. It was it looked impressive but it was not the product it wasn't a showcase rather of a product that people are going to get in their hands what it basically did though is it showed people that were snickering at the playstation 5 that no the playstation 5 ain't nothing to be you know laughed at either that it's going to have great rendering and great performance and all other stuff but only three to five percent of the fanboys that die on Twitter every day and every night, 240 characters about their favorite piece of plastic even thought that the PlayStation 5 games weren't going to look good. The overwhelming majority of the general gaming public had no such fear. They just want to see what the games. And to me, what Jeff did was more egregious because he did it on the heels of Xbox already disappointing people and over glorifying expectations. All for the sake of his PlayStation fanboyism. So you had the Xbox fanboys trying to cap for a horrible show with Xbox. You got Jeff Keighley that's supposed to be the mouthpiece, the Ryan Seacrest of gaming, God help us all. That again, double down on that overhyping. And this is supposed to replace E3? Are you serious? Hell to the no. Hell to the no, no. You want to know why? Because E3, despite all of his problems, despite the issues that it had, working things out with devs and publishers as far as how the showcase was run was an excellent standard bearer. What do I mean by that? It set the expectations that you are not to sit there and do these silly things on your own accord and, and not get slaughtered for it. If you came to E3 with a lackluster show, you knew you had to go on the ground floor, do interviews and answer for it. And see, with these horrible showcases, people can duck and hide, just send out tweets that that favor their, their fanboys, whatever, delete videos and re-upload them, and they're not held accountable the way that they should be on the gauntlet at E3. These showcases so far are miserable and horrible and I'm not saying that this is the way that it's going to be because we got bigger showcases that are coming. But again, E3 was a standard bearer for you to hold a litmus up 
to when people did poor things like this. Remember when PlayStation did the little wedding hall thing at the Justice of the Peace and I didn't go over well? They got land based for that. Remember when Xbox was showing you Bambi Simulator and was trying to tell you that games ain't all about headshots and blood? They got land based for that. And it makes people do what? Do better. So again, gamers, trust me, you don't want these game publishers, game makers, console, whatever, doing this stuff a la carte. Because you see what happened here. People taking down videos, people sending uh, tweets to other fanboys. Did you like this showcase? Of course they're all gonna say yes, because it showed them that, hey, my favorite piece of plastic can, can keep up. Nobody cares about that right now. Nobody, the vast majority of gamers didn't doubt that. They wanna see the games. Stop playing with our emotions. Period. That's it from your boy MM2K. Hey, yo, let me know what you think about what I had to say in the comment section below. Cause like I always say, who cares what I think? But if you did like what I had to say, check out the links below to follow me. Those links will lead you to the broadband bullies. PNTS Network, Hard Knock Digital Culture, and yes, the Stadia Dope I almost said here the Stadia Dope I'm losing the people. But that said, these game shows got to get better, man. They got to. They're killing the anticipation into next gen. I mean, people are still going to invest into it, but you got people on the periphery like, eh, I don't know. And, and, and if things continue this way, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They might just drop off. But with all that said, hope, here's, here's the things getting better. You all have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day. Peace.